So today I have another version of the Three Bears. This one is called Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Notice it has the Caldecott symbol. Won an award for good pictures. Pay attention as you're listening to this book and compare and contrast it to the last Three Bears story that you read. Remember that compare means to see how they are the same and contrast means to see how they are different. I think you're gonna like this one. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Retold and illustrated by James Marshall. Published by Puffin Books. Dedication for Trevor Brandon Johnson. Once there was a little girl called Goldilocks. What a sweet child, said someone new in town. That's what you think, said a neighbor. One morning, Goldilocks' mother sent her to buy muffins in the next village. You must promise not to take the shortcut through the forest, she said. I've heard that bears live there. I promise, said Goldilocks. But to tell the truth, Goldilocks was one of those naughty little girls who do exactly as they please. Check out the picture. Meanwhile, in a clearing deeper inside the forest, in a charming house all their own, a family of brown bears was sitting down to eat breakfast. A tui cried big old Papa Bear. This porridge is scalding. I've burned my tongue. Can you tell what scalding means by using the context clues? I'm dying, cried Baby Bear. Now really, said Mama Bear, who was of medium size, that's quite enough. I know, said Papa Bear. Why don't we go for a spin while the porridge is cooling? Excellent, said Mama Bear. So they got on their rusty old bicycle and off they went. A few minutes later, Goldilocks arrived at the bear's house. She walked right in without even bothering to knock. On the dining room table, there were three inviting bowls of porridge. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks, helping herself to the biggest bowl. But the porridge in the biggest bowl was much too hot. Patooey, cried Goldilocks, and she spat it out. Next, she tasted the porridge in the medium-sized bowl, but that porridge was much too cold. Then Goldilocks tasted the porridge in the little bowl, and it was just right, neither too hot nor too cold. In fact, she liked it so much that she gobbled it all up. Feeling full and satisfied, Goldilocks thought it would be great fun to have a look around. Right away, she noticed a lot of coarse brown fur everywhere. They must have kitties, she said. In the parlor, there were three chairs. I don't mind if I do, she said, climbing into the biggest one. But the biggest chair was much too hard, and she just couldn't get comfortable. Next, she sat in the medium-sized chair. But that chair was much too soft, and she thought she might never get out of it. Then Goldilocks sat in a little chair, and that was just right. Neither too hard nor too soft. In fact, she liked it so much that she rocked and rocked, until the chair fell completely to pieces. Now all that rocking left Goldilocks quite tuckered out. I could take a little snooze, she said. So she went to look for a comfy place to nap. Upstairs, there were three beds. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks. And she got into the biggest one. But the head of the biggest bed was much too high. Next, she tried the medium-sized bed. But the head of that bed was much too low. Then Goldilocks tried the little bed. And it was just right. Soon she was all nice and cozy and sound asleep. She did not hear the bears come home. The three bears were mighty hungry, but when they went in for breakfast, they could scarcely believe their eyes. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Mama Bear. 
Somebody has been in my porridge, said Baby Bear, and eaten it all up. In the parlor, the three bears were in for another little surprise. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Mama Bear. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Baby Bear, and broken it to smithereens. The three bears went upstairs on tiptoe, not knowing what they would discover. At first, everything seemed fine. But then Papa Bear lay down on his big brass bed. Somebody has been lying in my bed, he cried, and he was not amused. Egads, cried Mama Bear. Somebody has been lying in my bed. Look, cried Baby Bear. Somebody has been lying in my bed. And she's still there. Now see here, roared Papa Bear. Goldilocks woke up with a start, and her eyes nearly popped out of her head. But before the bears could demand a proper explanation, Goldilocks was out of bed, out the window, and on her way home. Who was that little girl, asked Baby Bear. I have no idea, said Mama Bear, and I hope we never see her again. And they never did. So what did you think? I like them both. If I'm comparing them, I would say they both had Goldilocks. They both had three bears. They both had porridge. They both had chairs. They both had beds. And Goldilocks ran away at the end of both of them. If I'm contrasting them, I would say this one, the bears were just wearing fur. And in this one, the bears were wearing clothes. In this one, the pictures were kind of plain. And in this one, the pictures were more detailed. In this book, Goldilocks, yeah, she didn't really do things right because she went into their house. But in this one, Goldilocks was just plain naughty. I'll have another version of Goldilocks and the Three Bears for you. Keep thinking of how you can compare and contrast them. Hope everybody's doing well. We miss you. Have a great day.